The last statistic that we're going to be learning about is called the chi-square test. The chi-square test is a test that you will be looking at count or frequency data between groups. So this is really different than a lot of the other statistics that we've been running where you have an independent variable and a dependent variable. Here, in this case, you just have two groups, one basically one variable, uh, and you're wanting to know is within the groups within that variable does the frequency differ. So unlike before, we're not going to be using interval or ratio variables anymore. Now we're going to be looking more at nominal variables because we're talking about count or frequency data. It's important to note that there are a couple of different kind of chi-square questions um, or chi-square tests, but the one that we're going to be doing is called the goodness of fit chi-square test. So as an example, you might be wondering if you flipped a coin a hundred times, do more heads appear than tails? So all we're talking about is coin flipping, and there's two possible outcomes or two possible groups here. We have the heads and the tails, and if you flip it a hundred times, you're going to have a count of how many times the head comes up and how many times the tail comes up. Hypothetically, we'd expect that it would be a 50-50 breakout uh, because of probability theory. So what you're looking for is to see whether the actual breakdown of the number of times you get heads versus tails is the same as what you would expect or is different than what you expect. And what you expect, you could sort of think of as the, the null hypothesis. We would expect 50-50. Is it the case, then, that we get something different than this? Another example would be, does Coke have more of the market share than Pepsi? Hypothetically, again, in the null world, you would expect that they share 50-50. But if we went out into the real world and asked people, do you prefer Coke or do you prefer Pepsi, it's quite possible that one would get a majority of the responses, a majority of the preferences from people. So we're asking, does what we see happening in the real world differ from what would be expected in the null hypothesis? Another example with more than two options would be if you were asking on a given multiple choice question, was one of the responses chosen more frequently than the others? So in a most multiple choice tests, you have four options. In the null world, you would expect that 25% of people would choose A, 25% would choose B, 25% would choose C, and 25% would choose D. But if you look at the data, you might see that one option was chosen more frequently than the others. So the test, the chi-square test, would look to see whether this is different than the expected 25, 25, 25, 25 breakdown. So the chi-square formula is talked about in this week's assignment folder, and not because you need to memorize it or because you need to know how to use it, but because it helps us sort of understand uh, what the chi-square test is doing. So the chi-square symbol is the actual uh, symbol that looks like a uh, capital X squared. And in order to cal calculate the chi-squared, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be taking the sum of the observed frequencies and subtracting the expected frequencies, squaring that value and dividing by the expected frequency. Which, again, you don't need to know a lot of, except that what we're really doing is we're comparing the observed frequency, what actually happens in the real world, to the expected frequency, and that's the expected frequency under the null hypothesis. So if there's a two, uh, two options, as in the case of the heads and the tails on the coin, the expected frequency would be 50-50. So we're wondering, does our observed frequency differ from that? If the observed frequency does differ from that, then we're going to get a significant chi-squared. If it's close to what was expected, we would get a non-significant chi-squared. 